Hi, in today's video we're gonna talk about the density altitudes. By the end of the video you're gonna know what the density altitude is, how does the density altitude affect your aircraft performances and how to calculate the density altitude. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from pilotclimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and if you are trying to become a better pilot or make your head run aviation, consider subscribing to the channel so you will not miss the next video. Before starting, for me it's extremely important that you leave in the comment below any questions you may have throughout the video. For me, it's paramount that you get 100% out of this today's topic. First of all, what you need to know in order to understand in full the density altitude is the meaning of pressure altitude. So if you haven't watched the video that I made a few weeks ago about the pressure altitude, I strongly recommend to stop this video, go watch the pressure altitude video and then come back here. You have the link in the description below about the video and on top of the video as well you can watch direct the video about the pressure altitude. Ok, let's jump into the today's topic. The density altitude is the pressure altitude correct by the temperature, ok? But why it's so important to correct the pressure altitude by the temperature? It's because the temperature it's basically it plays a big role when talking about the density because with higher temperature you have lesser density and when you have less density your aircraft performance will be impaired, ok? So you will need a longer runway or you will be able to load less weight compared to a day when it's cold and the density is high. So if you take for example the same iPod but into different uh, stage of the year, let's say winter and summer, you will see that your aircraft will behave differently, ok? So let's say that the Q and age in a winter day is 1000 hectopascal and the Q and age of a summer day is 1000 hectopascal, so the pressure is constant. However, in winter time you're gonna have probably minus 5 degrees and in summer time you're gonna have plus 30 degrees, ok? So the difference between these two days is that the aircraft in winter will have a better performance because the density is higher compared to the aircraft in summer that is gonna behave with the worst performances because the temperature is higher and the density is lower. So we can say that the density, the density actually works inversely to the temperature. The higher the temperature, the, le the lesser the, the, the density. And the, the opposite is true with the pressure. The higher the pressure, the higher the density, ok? So this is the first thing that we need to understand. Now we're gonna go into the whiteboard and we make some examples in order to make sure that this topic is 100% clear. Looking at the whiteboard here, I'm gonna divide the whiteboard into two sections, ok? We're gonna do the section A and the section B, ok? In the section A, I'm gonna draw a mean sea level, ok? An, an elevation, ok? And an, and an runway, alright? So let's say that the Q and H of today is 1013 hectopascal, ok? Standard Q and H according to the standard atmosphere and the airport elevation is actually 1000 feet, ok? The, in the scenario B we've got the same thing, ok? So M means 11, Q and H 1013.25 hectopascal. So guys if you don't know what Q and H is, I made a separate, separate video about that. I'm gonna uh, leave the video in the description below, ok? So then the same airports, ok? which has got an elevation of 1000 feet. So as you can see, the conditions are pretty much the same. The only thing that changes is that in example A we are in winter, so let's call it a temperature at the mean sea level, mean sea level temperature of 5 degrees, ok? And example B we are, we are in summer, so let's call temperature at the mean sea level of 25 degrees, ok? Fantastic, so as you can see the, 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 we've got the same conditions, the only thing that changes is the temperature. And what we're gonna figure it out is how this temperature deviation, this variation in temperature will actually affect the aircraft performances, ok? So the aircraft is actually on the runway and what we need to figure it out is what will happen to his performances, ok? So before going uh, forward we need to make a quick recap of the standard atmosphere, ok? I made a separate video uh, about that, if you haven't watched the video and you don't know what the standard atmosphere, I strongly recommend to stop the video, go there, check the video and then come back, ok? You can see the video as well on the card above here, ok? The temperature in the standard atmosphere says that the temperature at the mean sea level is 15 degrees Celsius, ok? So the temperature in here is 15 degrees according to the standard. As you can see in winter it's 5 so it's colder and in summer it's 25 so it's warmer. And the, the Q and H, alright, the Q and H 
is 1013.25 hectopascal. So in this to, in today we've got a standard QNH, however, the temperature is not standard. And what says the standard temperatures were well, that, that the, the, the temperature decreased by two degrees per each thousand feet. So what I mean by that is that if at the mean sea level we've got 5 degrees, the temperature 1000 feet above mean sea level will be 2 degrees colder. That means we're going to have a temperature of 3 degrees. So the temperature in the first airport, I mean the airport example A is 3 degrees Celsius and in example B the temperature will be 23 degrees Celsius because the temperature decreases. 2 degrees every thousand feet, okay? And we can also say that per each degrees of temperature deviation from the ESA, okay, from the standard 15 degrees at mean sea level, we, the, the, the altitude changes by 120 feet, okay? So if the temperature of the mean sea level is 16 degrees, so it means that it's one degree warmer than the standard one, an aircraft at the mean sea level will actually feel that it's 120 feet and not at the mean sea level, even though it's actual position is above the mean sea level because it is extremely important to understand that the aircraft doesn't care about its, actually, its actual altitude or actual position. It only cares about what it feels, what altitude it feels, what density it feels, what pressure it feels because their performances are based on what it, the aircraft feels, not what the aircraft actually is. Okay, so as you can see in the example A and example B, we've got QNH1013, which is standard. However, what is the, the implication of having a colder temperature or a warmer temperature? Because the aircraft will feel a different altitude because of the temperature uh, variation. Okay, so let's call, let's calculate the density altitude. The first thing that we need to calculate in order to get the density altitude is the temperature deviation at the airport. Okay, in order to calculate temperature deviation at the airport, we need to calculate the standard temperature, okay, that will have been in a standard atmosphere starting at mean sea level 15 degrees, 1000 feet above that. That means that it will be a temperature which is colder by 2 degrees. So, according to standard, standard airport temperature, will be 15 at the mean sea level minus 2 will be 13 degrees Celsius, okay? And this is a standard thing because according to the KO standard atmosphere, the mean sea level will go 15 degrees, 1000 feet above is 2 degrees colder, so it's 13 degrees. However, the temperature on that winter day at the airport, as we said before, is 3 degrees, okay? So the actual, actual airport temperature is 3 degrees Celsius. So as you can see we've got 10 degrees of temperature deviation. So what we can say as well that the temperature at the airport is another way to say what the temperature at the airport is ISA minus 10 degrees Celsius, okay? Because the ISA at the, at the airport is 13 degrees, minus 10 is 3 degrees. Okay, fantastic. So now that we know that for each degree Celsius, we've got 120 feet of altitude uh, difference, okay? This is the implication. So the implication of the temperature, that means that is if the temperature is colder by one degree, the aircraft will feel 120 feet lower, okay? So what we've got, since we've got 10 degrees colder, the, the aircraft will actually feel that is at 1,200 feet lower than the actual uh, position. So we take the 10 degrees uh, temperature deviation, this one, okay? We multiply that by 120 and it's gonna give us the 1,200 feet difference in altitude that the aircraft is actually feeling. So since the aircraft is in, at this real altitude of 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet because the elevation of the airport is feeling 1,200 feet lower than that, its density altitude, it will actually be minus 200 feet. So the aircraft will actually feel that it's below the mean sea level. Of course, this is all theory, but this gives you an example of how the aircraft performance will actually behave. So we're gonna have a very good aircraft performance since the aircraft will have a lot of air, it's feeling that it has a lot of air, more air compared to this actual position so the engine will produce more thrust the, and the wings will produce more lift. So you're gonna need a shorter takeoff runway uh, distance required, okay? You're gonna be able to load more weight for the same runway, okay? So this is the first example. Let's see in the example B where we have a warmer temperature in summer, for example. 
since the conditions are the same, the airport is the same and everything is, is the same, we can again say that the standard, standard airport temperature, okay, is still the same because this is a, a standard atmosphere and the, the conditions haven't changed, so it's 13 degrees. However, the actual airport temperature it's 23 degrees because it was 25 at the mean sea level, 1000 feet above the, the temperature decreases by 2 degrees, so 25 minus 2 is 23 okay, degrees Celsius. So we can actually say again that the temperature of the airport, of the airport is ISA plus this deviation and this deviation is 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, again, we do the, the same calculation, we take the deviation, we multiply by the 120 because per each degree of temperature deviation we've got an, an altitude felt by the aircraft of 120 feet more or less depending if it's warmer or colder, so we take the 10 again multiplied by 120 and give us the same result, okay, 1200 feet. In this case, however, since it's a warmer temperature, the density is lower, so the aircraft will actually feel that it's 1200 feet above its current position, and since its position is at 1000 feet, that means that its density altitude will be 1000 plus the 1200 it feels due to the temperature, so its density altitude will be 2200 feet. So, can you see the problem now? The problem on the example B is that even though the aircraft is at 1000 feet above mean sea level, it is actually feeling and behaving performance wise like if you would have been at 2200 feet. Thus, you will need a longer runway, or if the runway is a limit, is a limit you will be able to carry less weight. Okay, so this is why it's so important to take into consideration the temperature as well. When I operate during normal operation, I have a software that I put my temperature in, my QNAG in and everything, and we calculate very straight away what's the weight that I can carry in order to take off from that runway. Okay. One thing we have to talk about is that in this example, we actually thought and uh, made the QNH standard 1013.25 hectopascal, but the pressure plays a huge role on the performance of the aircraft as well. Because let me ask you the question, and please answer in the comment below with what you think. What would have happened if instead of having a QNH of 1013 hectopascal, we would have had a QNH of 990 hectopascal? All right, please leave in a comment below your answer. So, in that case, you need to take into consideration the aircraft performance. Uh, relative to the pressure and then you have to correct that pressure to the, uh, with the temperature. So you have to do two corrections and that's why in the software that we use as a professional pilot we, have, we, we insert the temperature, we insert the pressure. So the software can think about okay your pressure altitude is this and your density altitude is that one. So it's gonna give us a, uh, the, the exact altitude at which the aircraft feels that it is and not the actual altitude, okay? I made a separate video about the performance, uh, sorry, about the pr pressure altitude. Watch that. I'm going to link in the description below because it's a very important uh, video to, to watch, okay? So, guys, I hope this video was clear for you. If you took something out of it, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Again, leave in the comment below any questions you may have throughout the video and answer the, answer the question that I just asked. Also, go to paroclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paro training content. And I'll see you in the next one.